Welcome to the second video on how to structure your systematic literature review paper different sections. So in the previous video, I started talking about how is, uh, how is the introduction section structured? What are the different sentences that, uh, that are included in this introduction section and what do they convey? In this video, I'm taking it further. I have completed the complete introduction section. I have tagged each and every sentence as to what that sentence is contributing to this, uh, to the sentence. So let's look at it. The first sentence, which starts here, intelligent tutoring systems, or computer programs, so on and so forth. This section is talking about, sorry, this sentence is talking about the introduction to intelligent tutoring systems. So it's giving a background information about what is ITS. The second section or the second sentence is now talking about how certain things work in ITS. So here they talk about what and how to teach. So have a look at so starting with the introduction to ITS and next is how certain things work. Example, how ITS works. So that is the first paragraph. It has two sentences. We move on. We see the next paragraph, which again has two sentences. The first sentence here talks about the effectiveness of ITS. So ITS are effective and this is uh, stated in multiple research articles. So what the author is trying to do here is gain support from the literature to show that ITS systems are effective. The next paragraph, the next sentence talks about how ITS results in learning gains. So basically it is talking about the benefits and providing a justification kind of that. ITS is important. It helps students to learn, helps their metacognitive decision making and so on. So effectiveness of ITS and how ITS is, and the effectiveness is given uh, an example of effectiveness is now given using students learning gains. And again, you can see there is a support from the literature. The third paragraph now defines a new concept called dialogue systems. And this definition is important because this paper is focused on dialogue systems. A dialogue system is a computer program that communicates with a human user by using natural language. So that is a that that is what is a dialogue systems. And the next sentence is saying that it is increasing in popularity. So when you think about why this sentence is put here, the reason is it is providing a justification that it is a growing field. It is a lot of uh, it is of interest to a lot of people, researchers and students. So that is the justification and you will see later on that this justification is nicely used to justify the need for doing this systematic literature review paper. The next paragraph talks about different types of strategies used in natural language tutoring systems. This is then related to the literature. Because again, you can see relying on getting support from the literature. So here there are say there are different types of uh, ITS systems or different strategies used in ITS systems. And these strategies are reported in the literature related to ITS de developed over recent years. The next sentence is saying that there is a growth of literature in this area. Yeah, so this is important because this is now tying in, as you can see, slowly, slowly to the main objective of introduction that is to create the or showcase the need for doing a systematic review in this area. Then the author moves on and explains some of the existing SLR papers. So paper 12 relate to an existing SLR paper this evolution is kind of an SLR. So here they say one example of this evolution is described in 12. So evolution is kind of growth in the research in that area. So they have started to describe existing SLR papers. So the first paper is 12. The next sentence gives a summary of that paper. 
Then another paper is covered, paper 13. Here another description or a summary of this SLR is given. Then they say moreover, this work also revealed how the natural language dialogue strategies implemented by these tutors have improved over time. So you can see there is a connecting sentence here using the word moreover. So if you have uh, joined my five weeks SLR course and uh, completed the day one of my uh, course, you will see on slide 21 that I talk about conjunctive adverbs. And this is an example, a beautiful example of using conjunctive adverbs here. Moving on, another paper, another SLR is described, paper number 14, with a different focus. Here the focus is on conversational dialogues. So if you see here, each and every SLR paper is briefly described just using a few, a few, uh, just using one or two sentences in a very few words. Then the focus changes. And here it starts with however, to the best of our knowledge, to date, no systematic literature review of ITS with dialogue in natural language has been presented. So this sentence is showing or describing the need for doing a new SLR. And this is what this paper is going to do. Hence the main contribution of the paper is to, and then it lists the main contribution. So this is fairly straightforward. This sentence is uh, listing the contribution of the paper. I found that this sentence was quite long. It was around 50 words in that sentence. I would have broken it down into uh, each individual contribution. Then the focus shifts again. And now the focus is on, now that they have justified that they want to do a SLR, which SLR approach they are going to use. Kitchenham and Charters is the one that they have selected. And they have given an explanation or definition of SLR in this context. The next, next sentence explains the SLR process, the one proposed by Kitchenham and Charters. The next sentence then they talk about the main goal again. So reiterating after explaining that they are going to do the SLR re, uh, and the, the section, the introduction section is coming to a close. They reiterate the main goal of the SLR is to do this. And the introduction section then ends by looking at the, uh, the structure of the rest of the paper where you say section two talks about this, section three is about this and so on and so forth. So what I've done now is I've taken all these different paragraphs and kind of created a introduction section structure template just from this one, one paper. So in the first paper, sorry, in the first paragraph, the focus is on talking about introducing ITS and how certain things work in ITS. In paragraph two, the focus is on conveying that ITSs are effective and how it results in learning gains. So basically providing benefits and giving justification. Paragraph three then moves on to dialogue systems, which is the focus of this paper. And they have provided justification from literature saying that it is increasing in popularity. Paragraph four, talks about different types of strategies used in NL, natural language tutoring. And again, relying on the literature, uh, they have provided sufficient justification. Paragraph five then moves on and talks about the growth of the literature in this area, relate to an existing paper, showing the evolution, and basically starting to describe the existing systematic literature review papers that are, that are already published in this space. Paragraph six then shifts the focus and strongly justifies the need for doing a SLR in this area. It then talks about the contribution. Once that is done, the next paragraph covers the SLR approach that is being used. In this case, it is Kitchen Hammond Charters. They also mention the main goal and finally conclude the introduction section by giving the structure of the rest of the paper. 
So as you can see, each and every paragraph had some objective, what they want to convey. So when you are writing your introduction section or your research paper, first of all, come up with this kind of a logic. You know, this is how you are going to structure the content of your section of your uh, different sections. So imagine the introduction section. You already have some ideas by looking at this paper, the different uh, focus areas of the introduction section. When you read your research paper, I want you to do the same thing. Break it down sentence by sentence and think carefully what that sentence is trying to convey. Why is it there in that in that paragraph or in that section? Because it has to convey something. And like what I have shown you here, it is very effective if you have a structure like this and then start writing. So this is kind of creating a blueprint or a architecture for your for your paper. So similar to the example that I gave in the course where I mentioned about uh, give, gave you the analogy of considering your paper as building a house. So when you start to build a house, you need to know how many rooms you will have, how many windows, how many doors, what will be the size of the different rooms and so on and so forth. So that is planning how your house is going to be built. So coming up with the design. The same thing you have to apply in your um, in uh, when writing your paper. So consider writing a paper as a design exercise. Design the different sections. Work out what are the different things that you want to cover in each of the paragraph. Break it down like this and then start writing. So once you have this kind of a structure, it is fairly easy for you to then write either one sentence or two sentences to cover these topics. It will make your writing process very, very easy and very convenient. So that's all in this video. Uh, I will I will continue working on this paper and making this videos as I progress. But I wanted I want you all to continue uh, on the SLR that you have selected and go through it sentence by sentence and build up your own structure, build up your own template for the different sections of your SLR paper. All right, on that note, I'll say thank you very much for listening to this video. Uh, do subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends who may also benefit by listening to my talks. Thank you. Bye-bye.